Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. My dear old mum wants the cushions on her couch to be recovered, so that's what I'm sewing today. So I'm really glad to have you along for the ride. I'm going to show you an easy way to make cushion covers, dead easy, but if you're a total beginner, you might like to find a way that's even easier. So go back to this video, the very first video I ever yeah, it was the very first video I ever made. And so I'm gonna show you right from the beginning of how to set up your machine, how to start sewing, and how to make an envelope style cushion cover that does not even have a zipper. It just kind of folds over super easy. So if you're a total beginner, go back to that video. But if you're ready to try um, what I think is like probably the cleanest and still very easy way to make a cushion cover is using an invisible zipper. Now, I once had a student say to me, I asked her, so do you have a regular zipper or an invisible zipper? And she said, uh, well, I can see it. <laughs> so an invisible zipper doesn't mean you can't see it. It means you can't really see it once it's sewn in because the teeth are curled into the back. Some people maybe think of an invisible zipper as a more advanced step, but it's in my book, it's not, it's easy. Uh, there's a couple tricks you need to know though. Um, but for me, putting in an invisible zipper into a cushion cover is easier than putting a regular zipper in that you have to kind of cover over and then top stitch down. This one, it's just gonna be clean and hidden and very easy. I'm making two cushion covers today. So I bought 1.5 yards of fabric, um, but that's probably more than I need, but see this big medallion kind of print, I'm gonna be making sure I center that medallion on the cushion. So that means I need a little bit more fabric to play around with so that I get that nicely centered. I have here a 20 inch pillow form that you can buy pillow forms ready made or you can just cover an old cushion. If you're gonna be doing two 20 inch cushions then you would need 40 inches of fabric at a minimum. A little bit more makes it a little bit easier so that you don't have to sort of scrimp and save so much. But minimum 40 inches for two 20 inch pillow covers. And I have an invisible zipper that's 20 inches as well. It can be extra long. Sometimes extra long makes it a little bit easier, but shorter is not good. If you have an invisible zipper foot, that's awesome. If you don't have one, a regular zipper foot will do. It is a little tricky to do it with a regular presser foot. If you don't have a zipper foot, it's probably time to invest in one. So whatever your pillow form is actually, that's the same size square that you're gonna cut. You're not even adding seam allowance to that square. The reason is that that pillow wants to squish in a little bit. Your pillow is gonna look a lot nicer if the pillow form fits snugly in there. If you add seam allowance, it's just, it's just gonna be a little looser on the edges. I think it's nicer to cut your squares exactly the same size as your pillow and then when you sew it, you take up that seam allowance and it becomes just a tiny bit smaller. Get what I'm saying? It, it works, trust me. So if you've got a 20 inch pillow form, cut 20 inch squares. Okay, good. So I went ahead and cut my squares, but they are centered around the pattern. I think that does look nicer than just kind of randomly cutting them. So I cut my four squares because I'm making two pillows. I went ahead and I surged one edge of each of my squares and that's just to prepare for the zipper. Now, if you don't have a serger, don't worry, you can just zigzag that edge, but you do want to finish it in some way, either a serger or a zigzag, um, because you don't want to have loose threads around your zipper. The other three sides, it's up to you if you finish those edges off or not. That edge by the zipper, you just don't want to have threads being caught in there and sticking out and looking not that nice. So finish that edge off, one, just one edge on each of your squares, good? Okay, so this is an invisible zipper, and yes, you can see it, but see how the teeth are rolled to the back? You're not gonna see anything in the final cushion except this little slider. So I'm gonna demonstrate sewing it with the invisible zipper foot and with the regular zipper foot. This is an invisible zipper foot. On the back, it has these two grooves and those are little channels where the teeth of the zipper are going to slide through. That puts your needle exactly where it needs to be. So you'll just scoot down there with your invisible zipper foot. You can use a regular zipper foot. Again, you have to physically unroll the teeth, move your needle over closer, but where you're going to be aiming to put your needle 
is really like right in beside those teeth. If you're a little ways out, you're still going to see the strip of color from the zipper. It almost feels like you're gonna be hitting the teeth. You have to get that close. Some people do like to unroll the zipper and actually press it open. So unroll that coil and press that out flat. Don't linger with the iron because you can melt the teeth. It's a quick going over with the iron to press out the curl. First of all, with the invisible zipper foot with the two channels on the bottom, the opening for the needle obviously goes to the front. I like to start with the zipper closed, just so I'm very clear with which is the right side. Now this zipper is actually the original zipper from the pillows that I'm recovering. So it has been used before. This is the right side of the zipper. The, zip, the side where you don't see the teeth is the right side or the good side. And we're gonna put that together with the fabric. So it's right sides together, good sides together. So I wanna put where the zipper is stopping about a finger width away from that top edge. I don't wanna be up here. Then once I know I'm right sides together, I'm gonna to unzip the whole way and I can let the other side go. If it makes you more comfortable, you can put pins the whole way down, but I'm just gonna go for it. I wanna be putting those unrolled teeth into the left side channel so that my needle can be right in beside here. You can't just let the channel do the work for you and let it go through curled. You have to unroll it. On this edge, I've got the zipper tape just lined up with my serged edge. I always like to be able to see the serging or zigzagging so that I know that I'm not missing it entirely. I just want to see that edge. And here I go. Having the extra long zipper makes it so much easier because that slider is right out of my way. I don't have to worry about it at all. I can just stitch right to the end of my fabric. Good. Good, and then when you fold your fabric, all you'll see are those teeth. And then just zip it up again. Good, so you can see that it's using that zipper foot got me right up close and you really don't see any of the zipper tape on this side. It's going to be invisible once I've sewn the other side and all you'll see is the little slider. So before I do the second side, I'm gonna do the first side again on the other cushion, but I'll show you with the, in, with the regular zipper foot. I wanna put it onto the left side of it. And this time I wanna bring my needle over to the left. On my machine, it's just a different stitch. So I've selected the stitch that moves my needle over. You might have a dial or something that moves your needle for you. I have right sides together, making sure that my end stopper here is within a finger's width of that top edge here. So I don't end up with that gap. Good, so now I'm gonna be coming down, making sure that curl stays flat. And can you see where it's like a bigger line of holes there, right where the teeth are? That's where I wanna be aiming for, like really that close to the teeth. So I'm going quite slowly. Now be careful here, cause there's nothing between my fingers and the needle, right? I could very easily catch my finger under the needle. And when you're working like this, you do want to be close, but just be very cautious. Please don't sew your finger. I wouldn't say that this is a hard or advanced step. You do want to have some control and be able to sew straight and be able to sew where you're aiming to sew. And having pressed those teeth flat first, it does make it easier as you go because you're not kind of wrestling with it as you're sewing. It's already organized for you. And so right to the end of your fabric. So the first sides of both cushions are done. And I'm just gonna test out to make sure I can still zip up this zipper, no problem. For the second side of the zipper, 
I want to line it up at this end the same. So if I've got that little, like, not even a quarter inch sticking out, I want to have the same amount sticking out on this side. You see what I mean? That these are level right when I put these edges together. Make sense? Okay. I'm going to stick one pin in here. But for this side, I'm actually going to start sewing from the other end because I always want to have the edge on my right and I want to have the zipper side up. So now on this side, I am definitely going to use some pins because I'm starting at that side, but I want to make sure that both sides are lined up nicely. So pins are a good idea on the second side here. And notice also that my pins are pointing towards the end I'm going to be starting at. I'm going to be starting here. It's just so much easier to be able to pull my pins out this way rather than pulling them out into the machine. I'm going to reach inside and undo that zipper and again i'm moving that slider all the way off to the end so that it's totally out of my way and then i'm just going to do this side in the exact same way so here i am still with the regular zipper folks i wish my zipper was a little bit longer because can you see that i'm butting up against that slider even though it is a little bit longer i just can't get right into the end there but that's going to be okay When both sides are done, I'm going to zip it up and check and look at that. Oh my gosh, that is extremely satisfying. It just looks like a regular seam. I could cry. That's so beautiful. Give that a quick press. And honestly, wouldn't you just think that was a seam? You would not think that that's a zipper. Oh, that is why I love making a cushion with an invisible zipper. It's so much better than a regular zipper in a cushion. Good, so both zippers are done. They look fantastic. I'm switching back to the regular presser foot so that I can sew up the three sides. Okay, now again, if you want to put some pins, if that's going to make you more comfortable, definitely go for it. Sewing the three sides, we need to have that zipper open a bit, at least hand width so that we can get in and open it up more later because we have to turn this pillow right side out. You can have your zipper tape going down like this, but what actually makes a nicer corner, I think, is having your zipper tape up like that. It's sort of tempting to kind of sew it like this, which is fine. It just makes for a bit of a bulkier corner. So flip your edges up like that and then sew your three sides. You can put some pins if you like, but I'm just matching up my corners, matching up my edges. Okay. And then sew around all three of the remaining sides. On your corners, you want to have a nice clean pivot. You don't want to stitch past and past because we're going to be cutting off the extra fabric around the corner. So if you've gone past, you'll be cutting off that thread and you'll end up with a hole at the corner. So please try for a nice clean pivot. So those bottom corners, you can cut off that extra fabric around the corner just to reduce the bulk on the corner. It is entirely up to you if you want to finish these edges or not. If you think you're going to be taking this pillow cover off to wash it, then yes, I would definitely go ahead and either serge or zigzag these edges because those will fray. But if you're going to put this cushion cover on and leave it on for the rest of its life, then it's okay if you don't finish those edges. You will be forgiven and you'll never even remember that you didn't finish those edges. So flipping out this whole pillow now, you can take something like a chopstick to poke out your corners. We wanna poke those corners out nice and pointy. So now I'm just going to take these to the iron, press a good edge, bringing that seam right out. You don't want to have two creases with a dent in the middle when you're at the iron. You want to be able to pull 
that seam right out so that your edge looks really great and crisp. Do you see how easy it would be to, to press this with two creases and a dent in the middle? I don't like that. So if I push away the top, pull that seam toward me, I get that good edge. Sort of work it with your hands first before you hit it with the iron. You can even kind of roll it back and forth between your fingers until that seam comes right out to the edge. Okay. So then the pillow form goes in and it's a nice snug fit so the pillow is not going to look all saggy and baggy. So these are ready to go on the couch and I'll show you how it looks at the end. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really happy to have you along for the ride. And if you like today's video, go ahead and hit subscribe. It'll be nice to have you along for my next sewing adventure as well. Until then, you take care. That looks really, really nice.